welcome back to another episode of Zero to Sixty. I'm here with my old friend. Well, he's not our old, but we've been friends for a long time, Andrew. Uh, Andrew's actually had quite a few of his cars on the channel before, back in 2016, 2017. Give or take, yeah. It was a while ago. He's a proper petrol head. In fact, what cars did we film? We filmed your cube. Yep. That was not a good way to enter into the Petrohead status. I would have left he, the best to last, but you know. <laughs> we did his Corvette. Now that was a special Corvette. It was the Carbon Edition Z06 pack. Yep, that's right. Not the full Carbon Edition, but the Carbon pack on the Z06. <laughs> so I'm not a big Corvette guy, but it's a 427. It was tuned. It was like 600 wheel horsepower. One of the fastest cars I've been in. In fact, I'd like to have ran that against like a 17T BMW. I reckon that would be close. It was a fast car, faster than his M5, which we also filmed. And also you had like a pretty well built Skyline. One of the, in fact, to this day, probably one of the better handling cars I've had on the channel. Not the fastest, but it was just well set up. Yeah, I'll take that. That's and what it was designed to do. So if, if you agree with that, I'll, I'll take the compliment as it's given. And hopefully as I rattled all that off, there'll be a nice montage of all the cars that we filmed. But Andrew messaged me about a month ago and he said, I bought a new car and it, it wasn't cheap. It was the best part of $200,000, and you guys still won't know what it is, but I've been really confused as to why he decided to go this way. So he's gone from the purity of BMW excellence, the Skyline, which is really cool, the Corvette, which was just a proper muscle car, and then you've gone into this. It is a V8, but why? Uh, probably COVID brain. COVID brain. <laughs> he's been telling me all these good things about it. Let me just show you what it is. It is, it's a Lexus LC 5. 500? 500. It is an LC 500. In some markets, it's known as a uh, GR Camry. <laughs> and I'm, I'm still, I'm still a bit confused. I'm going to be honest with the audience. Am I going to be converted into a Lexus enthusiast by the end of this like Andrew is? How's golf? Yeah, it's fantastic. It's great. But no, let's rattle off some specs about this and try and get it through to you guys why it's actually quite a cool car. So it is a five litre V8. Correct. It is, it's a modern V8. Would you mind popping the bonnet? Yeah. But it is a modern V8. So it's got direct injection and port injection. The thing that Andrew's been really, really happy with, obviously he's come from the SMG in the V10 E60. How long have you had that car? Uh, uh, since 2012, so 10 years. 10, see, he's also, a, a, he's had a V10 for 10 years. He still loves this, he's not sold it. It's staying in the garage for now. Although he said it's not getting much use since this has arrived. But the big thing he's loved with this car is the automatic gearbox. So obviously if you've had an SMG in your life, you know they're not the best things in the world for going through the gears, where he thinks this thing is probably as good as a DCT from what you've been saying. Oh yeah, it's smoother than DCT, but limited experience with those. Mine, I'm usually in manuals or uh, SMGs, so something smooth and modern was a nice change. And you you can see we've got the high pressure fuel pump right there. I can't quite see the DI injectors, but you can see the port injectors. It has got both. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about that is I've heard a little rumor that BMW are bringing port injection back. They're going to do the same thing where they run direct injection and port injection. How's this on fuel? Magic. Magic. Infinitely better than the, the M5. It uses less fuel than a V10 M5. Yep. Who would have thought? <laughs> uh, on paper, it's a similar spec to the E60 M5. So it's around 500 horsepower? 473. That's as close as makes no difference. That's, especially that's 500 in YouTube numbers. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Nearly 500 horsepower. Is it more torquey than the E60? Uh, slightly, yes. That's, yep. that's probably where I'm getting the, the similar similarities. Similar weight or heavier? Similar weight is about 1900 soaking wet okay. with a skinny kit in the front. No, it's heavier, it's heavier. It's a heavier car. Yep. It is sitting on 21 inch wheels, which to me do not scream performance. Those brakes <laughs> are actually gigantic, but they just look small between a 21. And it is actually quite a big car. I've been, I got to see it a few days ago, not a few weeks ago really, at Queensland Raceway. And in the car park, it was parked next to a C63, but next to an E65 series, the sports car is, it's about the same size. It's really weird to get your head around. It is gigantic. But it's a good cruiser. Brilliant cruiser. That, that's the, sits on the highway, it's quiet, gets you home. That's what you want, right? Well, I want to know what it's like I'm very drive. old. <laughs> and it's important, you've got to get down to the Mason's meetings, like, nice and quick, this does it for you. I don't know, I don't know. I'm keen to go for a drive. Now, let's take it for a spin. We're going to get it warmed up and you'll see us. And I'm going to share my very, very BMW objectified opinion of this Lexus LC500. And now for a quick message from our sponsors, ExpressVPN. <laughs> Oh, did I do it? Did I, did I, am I YouTube? You're better than I am. That does remind me, if anyone would like to sponsor the channel with advertising, positions available. I still need to get that worked out, but thank you to everyone on Buy Me A Coffee already. It's making a huge difference. Andrew, let's give it a start up and see what it sounds like. Wow, all right, all right. It's 
got a bit of a bark to it. I think it's a full flat one it'll do it. I think we need to get out on the road. I want to see what it actually drives like. The interior is blowing my mind and we've got to drag it. We've got to see how fast or slow it is. Smoother than comfortable. <laughs> Smoother than comfortable. Dragging it's quicker than the M5? Uh, yeah, just because it's got an auto and it gets traction. And it actually works. All yes. right, let's go for a spin. All right, so initial impressions from the passenger seat. It feels like a race car. I'm so low. Also, everything feels really nice. We've got leather, Alcantara. Even the belt feels expensive. Um, it's a lot of old man vibes. It is old man beige. The colour doesn't photograph well. That's the problem. Sometimes it looks like it's made of skin, which it's not. <laughs> well, it is. What are these? In, in the Australian point? market. Oh, oh it, that's is true. It, is this vegan? No, 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 no. It's, it's cow skin. It's just sometimes it looks like people skin. Dude, it feels posh. Oh, the back seat. The back seats look fast. I guess really everyone, you need to compare this to the current 8 series BMW because that's probably its best competitor, isn't it? Yeah, I think when, when it was released it was competing against the 6 series. Yeah. Um, so 2017 was the first model years for these. Now 8 series because the 6 has gone cheaper than that. This is a value proposition. So is this, of course it's cheaper than an 8 series. What isn't? So Yeah, that's true. Uh, I mentioned that it was nearly $200,000. In Australia, that's not a huge amount of money for a car. Well, it's a huge amount of money, but you can spend a lot more on a car. An 8 series is $400,000. You want to get a VA M50, it's basically four. 400-ish? Yep. Unless that's the m 8 Someone will correct me, but you can spend over 400 grand on a freaking 8 Series BMW. It's crazy. Where well, this is a bargain. So these new are about 210, 220? 210, 220, yeah. yeah. I think if you want a new one now, it's 18 months or whenever it arrives, and 220 plus whatever the um, markup they want to chuck on them. But um, And this is a 2019 or 2020? Yep, 2019. 2019. It had done 4,000 Ks when Andrew got it. You've already done 2,000 Ks, which is pretty impressive. Yep. Okay, so we are in sports mode. This is going to be my first acceleration. Traction control is off. Oh, it's making some noise. It's spun up. Are you sure I shifted? No, no. Okay, okay, that was... When did you thought it was going to be? That... Why is it making those noises? That's sick. What is going on with the shift? That's the traction intervening. So it'll that double shift if it spins up second. So rude. Okay, so we did actually measure a 60 to 120, and it was 4.5, which is pretty much on par to a bad run in the E60 M5. So it's a pretty similar speed. It skipped most of second gear though, so uh, but you one excuse. So something we've really failed to mention, that I should have mentioned in the intro, this car is actually fitted with a new, it's an ASIN 10 speed. Something I really liked about the ISFs was its eight speed. But an ISF 8-speed really compares to a ZF8 8-speed, even though it's also an ASIN unit. But this car, Andrew's rolling around, you are in... What gear are you in at the moment? We Doesn't don't know, because it's in automatic. Yep. But when he was given a bit of a stick before, he was in first gear. And it feels taller than the first gear in the ZF8. So it's quite usable. This thing must be hardly revving on the highway at 100k's an hour. 1350? It's ticking over. All right, we're going to give it one more little stab. We'll see if we can improve on the 60 to 120 time. We're going to start in second gear. So be in second and then give it a roll on, and we'll see if the 60 to 120 improves. All right. Manual. Is it auto shift? Uh, no, it'll just sit on the limiter. Okay, that's good. So that's second at 40 k's. Just mash it. comparable to David's supercharged E39 M5 and I feel like I'm in a hotel room. <laughs> this thing is huge and with the windows up it's silent. It's far it's a fast car. Okay so Andrew has held the traction control button for about five seconds. That's turned VSC off, some other things off, automatic braking off. So hopefully that's gonna stop the double shift when it spins up. And I, I think we need to give it one more try 60 to 120. You you doing it manual mode Let's see if we can get it into the threes. Because threes is a fast, fast car. I wasn't expecting this to be three, 60 to 120. It's Toyota, what do you expect? Well, it hasn't broken. Yeah. I didn't expect it to break. That's yeah, you've said that though. You've said it. <laughs> uh, Andrew was just saying off camera as well, uh, in Australia, these were all fitted with a diff. Well, a, a, a limited slip diff. Proper one, Torsen. It's a Torsen diff. Are they proper? Yeah, old school stuff. They, they work. It will leave two black lines anyway, where apparently the cars in Europe and the US will do one wheel peels. But it's still spinning up. Yeah, there was still a lot of them. The, one, the ones in the States, you can get a performance pack and it gets you the diff. 
there's a performance enhancement pack over here as well, but you get the diff standard. Right. It's just, it's difficult. If you're buying one, don't trust what the other markets say in terms of packages. Call Lexus Australia, because there's two packs over here. Let's go and see if you can do a three second. Mm. All right, Let's see what it can do. Okay, 4.1 again, all right. But it sounded better. It sounded better and had more traction than I expected. Dude, so 4.1, all right, we'll leave it there. Let's do an old school, classic zero to 60, two people in the car, a real world zero to 100 test. Do you know how to launch it? Does it yeah, have sure. launch control? It doesn't. It doesn't have launch control. You but call it... the Masons up and they <laughs> come and do it for you. But it does have an automatic. That's true. We should be right, we should be right. All right guys, let's see what we can do zero to 100. Get it flat out. Oh no. It wheel spun. It did a wheelie spin. Oh, you could have you could have kept going. It still would have been a time. It wouldn't have been a good time. It fell off the cam immediately. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll try again. It has got a bit more low-end torque than anticipated. So I'm in the driver's seat. I'm gonna have a go at launching it. Um, I don't know why Andrew thinks I'll be able to launch it better. Why do you think I might be able to launch it better? Oh, look, age and wisdom. You know, you've got about 15, 20 years and things. He's a funny man, isn't he? Uh, I'm just gonna do a bit of a roll on. I wanna feel how the power comes in so I can try and limit wheel slip. But we're in first gear. You know, I'm gonna go second gear roll on. Oh, that was quite an aggressive shift. All right, let's see what it does. Dude, it pulls. I like it. I kind of feel you can, pedal position can almost affect the noise that it makes. Yeah, I think so. If you're really aggressive and right at the end of the travel, certainly on the, the upshifts, do that fuel dump, a bit of a cut. I'm gonna try stuff. I'm just gonna try a launch before anybody else joins us on the track. Um, see how we go. Brakes are super touchy, which is probably a good thing. All right, we did. Zero to 105.4. Yeah. I was expecting better. It felt better. Can we improve? I think we can. The 60 to 120 was 4.2. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Another try. Another try, everyone. So I'm going to try and give it a bit more revs. And it did It did break loose a little bit, but it pulled power, I feel. Well, it was off cam or something. Didn't feel powerful at the start, did it? No, it, it does come on power at about four. There's a step change, sort of. It's a bit like VTEC, if VTEC wasn't as vtec -y. The track is clear. Let's see what we got. I'm going to have, it's going to wheel spin, but I'm going to just pedal through it. sound good but was it quicker with wheel spin or slower slower 5.7 all right in that case we'll leave it at that it's a mid five second car real world time now i know that all the lexus enthusiasts are going to have a heart attack don't forget we've got two people in the car we're not on a good surface we're on a real normal racetrack one of us is very fat bastard sorry i was offended <laughs> the truth hurts but yeah, so don't be butt hurt. If we got it on a track and we kept doing it and we learned how to launch it perfectly and it was a good new, because these are probably original tires. Yes. So there is more in it, but that's a real world time. That's what you can expect to do. It's not slow, it's not a slow car. No, it's, it's big, it's comfortable. The good thing that I was saying to you off camera is, again, talk it up, it's mine and biased, is you're in, it's got 10 speeds, but one to six are sort of your real gears. Everything after that's overdrive. So you're in the gears long enough to enjoy it. It's well, actually, we'll do a little bit of an acceleration off these lights. So I'm in first gear in a 10 speed, and you guys listen to how usable it is and when it shifts. Obviously, I'm not going to go very fast because we're in town, but you kind of, I always thought that with 10 gears, it's going to be shifting, 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 shifting continually, but it doesn't. You've got, it feels like a normal gearbox. So we're in first. God, it's so smooth. It is a boat, but still in first. That was nearly the speed limit, and we didn't even get to the top of second. You're not smashing through the gears. They've geared it really weirdly. It's different to a ZF8. I also kind of like that you can go flat out, you're not going that fast, and you're not going sideways. It's actually usable. Yeah, so the good thing, if you look up uh, 
what they did when they designed the box. Sorry. Weird is right in that it's so they've equally spaced the gears. So if you're flat chat through it, my understanding is that you'll spend the same amount of time in each ratio as you head through them. Yeah, as you would in a eight speed or no 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 as in if you're in first for three seconds up until shifting to second you'll be in second for three seconds till you get to third you'll be in third three seconds till you get to fourth uh -huh. so they're equally spaced i stand to be corrected by the internet on that but that's my understanding of what they're aiming for when they did the ratios so all the overdrives are there for fuel economy happy days yep the rest is there to let you enjoy the engine and go up and down through the years because other people have said the same thing that all right you've got 10 ratios why don't you just have them you know the normal ratios crushed into your 10 speeds they'd be up and down all the time yeah. but you wouldn't have the traction you'd be up and down gears all the time fine but they tried to set it up so that you can enjoy the engine revving out within the gear but then when you're cruising it's got those extra overdrives yep it's fine so that's in comfort so it's a bit it makes you smile yeah I'm such a dick. I love my big powerful cars. I love that my N54 will annihilate this. Sorry. I love it. But this is fun. It's still fun. It's more than fun. It's impressive. That's a cool noise. Yeah. And as you say, you can you can enjoy it up to you know, sensible, sen speed. sensible speeds. Yes. And it feels like you're doing a million knots. It's like, like old big talky V8s which this isn't that big or that talky, but it feels quick and it feels fun without actually being that quick. Okay, so we've done a little bit of driving. I've played around in comfort mode, sports mode. I'm always curious about transmissions, especially as I get more into doing the transmission swaps. This trans, even in comfort mode, starts in first gear, which I wasn't expecting. I thought it might start in third or fourth, um, but it still starts in first. That's the way that Lexus or Toyota or whoever engineered it has, has done this. It feels like a normal six-speed gearbox when you're driving it. When you're actually on the gas, pulling away from lights, it's not smashing through the gears. It does do the same thing that a factory ZF8 will do, meaning when you're on the highway and you let off, it will actually engage neutral. So the car coasts super weirdly. You, you let off to sort of slow down and it just maintains speed. Just maintaining speed, I'm not touching the pedals, it's quite weird. Yeah, it's sort of coast, it's weird. It, there's no drag on the engine. But the thing I like the most, I've got to be honest, is sports mode. So we'll get it into full sports. Traction is on at the moment. Downshift a little bit, we're in first gear. Traction was pulling a lot of power then, but it just it just works. And it feels, it's more DCT-like than a ZF8. I will say that much. Some people might not like that, but it feels more like a DCT. The, the connection between the engine and the axle is more direct than a ZF8, which I kind of like. Yeah. It cracks. It cracks on the shifts. The G80 M3 doesn't crack like a DCT. Well, this has got the DCT crack somehow. And the nice blips on the downshift. That was traction interfering at 105 kilometers an hour then. It's got some poke. It goes all right. All right, double shifted. Top shift will do it. And by that I mean it auto shifted and then I shifted. But it felt really good going sideways. All right, let's give it another little bit of stick. I'm, I'm quite enjoying it though. So I've noticed it's got a two-step rev limiter then. That's the hardest I've revved it. Yep. I've been shifting just under 7,000 RPM, but at 7,000 RPM it starts, the, shift, the, the limiter starts to kick in and then it's got a harder, sh I keep saying shift, it's like a harder limiter at about 7.3. The limiter does sound quite good if you want to hit it. Did you mind about I, the limiter? I hate limiter bashing because it's a bit of a... Right. But it does no. sound good. <laughs> that was like a little race car. <laughs> Alright, that was pretty cool. 
I think you need to cut some cats out of this. <laughs> I think you yeah, need to ruin the car and it will be much more exciting. The internet will love it and that'll make it worthwhile. Dude, it makes some good noises. Yeah. It's, the, it's the tone as well. If anyone's driven an ISF, GSF, that sort of thing, it's a different tone. And, and there are exhausts for it out there. Army tricks, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. It just makes it loud. This might not sound like a compliment, but it 100% is a compliment. It sounds American. Yeah. It does not sound I had like a the Lexus. Is. That warms my heart. It's basically a Mustang sound. Yeah. Which, I mean, those coyotes sound freaking amazing. We want to go this way, don't we? Yeah. I want to drift it, but it's worth more than I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Dude, it's pretty fun. It's one downside of having a car that's this inviting to thrash and easy to thrash. You, you don't feel... Not that you feel scared, but you don't feel like anything bad's going to happen. It's lulling me into this false sense of speed on me. What could go wrong? You're not going to get a speeding ticket. It's not going to go sideways. But you just do it everywhere. I don't know if you've noticed. I just keep... I want to hear those top RPMs. Yeah, it's good though. you got first, second and third that aren't that quick. No. And I guess because it's their longer ratios to what I'm getting in the zf 8 and I'd say it's a longer ratio than the DCT as well, you can enjoy them a bit more. You're not going bump, 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 bump. Yeah. You can sit and you can wait and there's an anticipation. Of, I sound like the marketing department now. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it's, a job. If, if they want to give me a card, that's fine. Of course, Andrew had to read all this information to justify buying it. It's, it's, it's fun. It's a fun yeah. car. Which is what you want. Yep. And it's not caught fire. What? You've not had check engine light. No check it's engine light. not due for a service now. <laughs> we'll see what depreciation does long term. Bentley. It's cheaper than that. It's a lot cheaper than a Bentley, but it feels about the same size as a Bentley. Yeah. In fact, it's that sort of market. It's the 8 Series, the Bentleys, the S-Class Merc. Yep. I wonder if an S-Class would be this fun. If only we knew someone with a high performance S-Class. I've driven one of those. Have you? Yep. The S63 with a twin turbo. Yeah. It's very nice. It's very effective. But I describe the engine as compared to this, and it's not a put down on the Merc stuff. It's anonymous in what it does. It's effective. It's loud. It makes a noise, but it makes the same noise as it's the an GT. Appliance. Yeah, exactly. a very, very good one, an impressive one. This has squeaky brakes, which I imagine the Lexus service department gets many a phone call from an 85-year-old on the way to golf. All right, let's try one more little aggressive launch. Are we ready? I'm just going to mash it and see what the gearbox does. <laughs> kind of weird. Found traction pretty quick. You're going uphill though, so. Maybe we should try a start like that for a zero to hundred. Was that no brake? No brake. That was just straight to the pedal and it didn't lurch forwards. All right. I'm... I'll be back. Guys, we're going to try one more launch. Now, when I did that last little take up, I just mashed the throttle and it was like the car was in some sort of launch mode, which I wasn't expecting. So we're just going to try that. No brake boost. See what it does. Okay, Draggy's ready, everything's ready, traction is off. That's a much better launch. And there it is, 60. It's quite relaxing with the windows up. 5.3, so it was quickest. <laughs> it, it was Just. quickest. But that's what most of the other reviewers are doing. Again, take you out of the car, you'll take a tenth out of it. And when you're around that five, 500 horsepower, uh, the weight makes a big difference. Yeah. Like you're adding 5% to the weight of the car by having two people in it. Yep, it half the tank, all the fluids. There was a headwind too. I think we've got it there. We've got some numbers. Let's head back and talk about how Andrew made a financial mistake. <laughs> and I kind of like it. Well, we're back. As quite often when I drive a different brand, I've been quite impressed with it. Uh, it's very different to a BMW. It doesn't have that raw muscle car feel, which is why I think I fall for so many BMWs, the G80s, the the new M5s, they're just raw power. I know they say they're the ultimate driving machine, but I feel in the later generations, they're more about going fast in a straight line. That's what they seem to do really well, but that sells in the aftermarket because everyone wants to go fast. This feels really good to drive. I need to spend a bit more time in a G80, I do, or even an 8 Series, which is really what this compares with, but this definitely drives better than an E92 M3, an E60 M5, definitely better than a 335. It's a very different experience to the 1Ms that I've been in, but I do, I think I'd rather get in this and go for a, a B-Road bash than a 1M. 
it's got more character to it. And a lot of it comes from the engine. I was sort of talking to Andrew just before, something I think that is very different about this gearbox compared to a ZF eight speed. I don't think ZFs are doing 10 speed yet, but this ACE and 10 speed, the way the torque converter engages and disengages, and it must have some sort of lockup torque converter, it feels a lot more DCT like. Yep. It doesn't feel like an auto. And even when it's in the laziest mode, the RPMs drop down like they do on a DCT. They don't slowly glide and blend the gears as much as the ZF8. GoPro went flat, switching over to the phone. Hope you can hear me all right. But yeah, basically the, the gearbox feels special. I'm kind of excited now about what ZF are gonna do next. Keep in mind, ASIN bought out their eight speed before ZF did. That ISF gearbox come out before the ZF version. Um, and I think it's probably fair to say that ZF matched it. Um, I'd like to learn a little bit more about the ASINs. Uh, anyway, it'd be interesting to see what the next generation of ZFs is going to be like in the BMWs, if they go to a 10 speed or not. This car is pretty cool. Um, it's not fast. You're not going to go roll racing and upset anyone. Uh, upset uh, yourself. Apart from yourself. Um, but it's still pretty rapid, especially for the size of it. And I bet, yeah, I bet it's similar speed to. I was going to say an 840, but no, an 840 is probably quicker. The current ones, so they've got twin turbos. They're, they're infinitely quicker. The numbers are not what I bought this for. You it's, bought it for the soft close buttons. 100%, yeah, soft close buttons. And um, Andrew's been showing me all of the interior features. And it is, it blows my mind. As someone that messes with the mechanicals as much, like I get him, I just thrash a car. I don't appreciate the interiors enough. Watching Andrew explain all these little features and, not features, but... Quirks, Doug? Quirks. I'm not Doug. I know how to change a wheel. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a lot going on. Everything is soft clothes. Everything you touch is a nice material. Even the shifter. Like, it's leather and metal, and it just feels right. And you've got different textures of leather. It feels really good. It's solid. You can sort of be rough with it. It feels like it's there to be abused. But being this type of car, you just touch it once and you never touch it again. Um, everything's nice. It's a very nice car. I get the price tag. I get the price tag. In fact, I bet you can't get a BMW that's this nice for this money. Yeah, my position on it, and biases it may be, I'm going to sound like a massive wanker, is it makes me question how certain other brands selling two-door coupes can justify their prices. Their prices for what I think is equivalent quality Delete the badge off the thing, and that's one of the funny things. You park around, people ask, what is it? It does look weird. Yeah. The outside styling is hard to get around, especially looking at in photos. And Andrew had sent me a few photos of it, and I was like, oh, it's kind of different. But in person... It's like a vomit emoji. So. <laughs> that's a funny looking M3. But when you're actually around it and in person, and you just look at the door... It's like, fuck, that's a really cool shape. And then you look how the door folds into the front guard. Then you go to the front guard and then you look back how it all sort of works in through the roof line. There's so much going on with the design that you can't appreciate it until you've had time to sit there and actually look at it. That's That was my take. You yeah. look at it in a photo, you don't understand the work that's gone into what it is and why it looks this way. They don't photograph particularly well. They're quite For something that was originally in the concept designed in the States, and then hand it back to Japan when they decided to actually build the thing. It's quite Japanese in the the level of sort of detail and um, so fetishism. Much, there's so much going on in the interior. So I've just noticed we've got infotainment, then we've got clock, then we've got like art decor piece in there. I don't know if that's going to pick up, but there's like this texture that's behind a smooth piece that I'll probably just put a fingerprint on. <laughs> then you look over here, you've got like a hard leather... Uh, what feels like metal, but it's probably plastic. Then you've got Alcantara. Then you've got the handle. Leather, stitching. Two different textures on the leather. Metal, different texture again. The buttons. Is that plastic? It's plastic. Oh, okay. disgusted. Send it back. Send it back. Take it all back. Now, Jack's just like, there's so much going on. There's so much work in the interior. This is like a, a BMW individual 7 Series on steroids. I'm a big BMW fanboy, but I know most people that have gotten this far in the video are probably thinking about buying one of these, and there's there's a lot going on. Can I sign you up for a Camry? <laughs> well, no. No. How do they make... How do, how do Lexus make a drivetrain that gives you this experience in what is basically a barge, but then they don't put it in the Supra? This drivetrain yeah. in the Supra would have been amazing. And then if you can turbo that and get your big power, 
it would have really stopped it being completely shadowed by the fact it's a BMW. Yep. Weird. This, this, I think when they released the um, concept for this back in 2012, people assumed it would filter down and become a Supra. Yep. Um, and rightly so, and it didn't. But they're also surprised when they just printed this thing out and it's basically the same. I mean, you can do it in post, but you look at the original concept of 2012, it's the same car. Mm. Bar for some slight changes to the headlights and overall dimensions are ever so slightly different if they'll park next to each other, but they just built the thing. Um, but I agree with what you say with the, with the Supra, it's, um, it's surprising. Guys, I quite liked it, and I am probably the biggest BMW fanboy in the world. I will be looking forward to the next time he offers me the keys. Hopefully be on the track, so we can go sideways. You should go and play with that uh, flashier one from 2012. Yes. Does anybody want to see an LFA on the channel? I mean, I've just got to fly to Adelaide to do it, but I kind of need an excuse to go on holiday. It's been a while. All right, guys. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Comments below about how BMWs are better than Lexuses. <laughs> And uh, thank you to everyone that is supporting the channel. Thank you to Andrew for letting me film this while I'm down here. I do appreciate it. And I just love driving cars. All right. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace. YouTube face.